हलेलुया 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 यू मे बी सीटेड मे द रिचेस of omar yan his esha the esha of yan the happiness of shalom rest upon us as a people as we continue to delight in the revelation of yeshua hamashiah as we understand the in depths of the might of yah's power that he could cause from the womb of a woman for his mighty power to come forth and to exercise unto a people that he has elected that we have power in him through the might of this mighty testimony of Yeshua Hamashiach not so the enemy has gone forth to eradicate his power his name his identity through this form of blasphemy and he has raised up this harlot she is an indignant harlot she's a vile Jezebel and through that avenue of deception the minds of the masses have been deceived and we as Israya we have gone estranged from Yah his Torah the power of his name because in the power of the revelation of his name we can only get the name of his hamashiach not some devious damnable twisted idolatrous uh, name that has come out of this vile imagination of man to twist the mind of the true elect yisraya from knowing the power of their abba and to know his name it was one thing as a young lad as i recall it was one thing that was vitally important to me whether i ever saw my natural father i simply wanted to know his name that's all that mattered to me it was not whether there was a physical confrontation or we see each other eye to eye simply tell me his name and i will never forget i was 13 years old when my ema says to me you want to know your father's name i said please tell me that and she gave me the name of rj nichols and i went down between the trees and began to weep because that alone was enough to satisfy that void in my life that emptiness that thing which was lacking that was enough and i was satisfied until that point until the day that i saw this man in the physical sense and although that i would have preferred to keep it the way it was it was all right with me we must stand face to face with our abba that is why he is calling on a people today of a pure language that speaks his truth that their heart is saturated uh, with the power of living torah and we can never experience that until we allow the torah to examine us uh, and to eradicate the vile the stench of our damnable twisted filthy ways that we may begin to walk in the light and that is the or the brightness of torah and that will cause the inward part of man to rejoice greatly and to delight in the knowledge of his abba because only then will he have experience that there is a yada that he knows the abba by experience and not just by mere words that he has an experience and his wisdom it is personified in him because he has walked with him as david said he has talked with him and he knows that he is the elect of the most high we must have the mind of yah to speak to his raya 
We have heard every kind of damnable corrupt mind to speak to us. We are twisted. We are baffled at truth. We are unraveled at the concepts of Yah comparing them to this convoluted mind of ours that is so deceitful and so wicked with every kind of damnable damnation of corruption embedded there. And we must hear what Yah speaks on to Yisra'ya by his mind, by his love, by his love, by his utterance, his thoughts, his speech, his thoughts are not like our thoughts. His mind is not like our mind. We need that mind to speak to us. For our minds are spoken lies and every kind of damnable corruption. We have justified every kind of wickedness, every kind of sin, every kind of vile practice that has metabolized unto our neighbors, our ach, our ochot, and they are as wicked as you are. We must come to the conclusion, Yisrael, that there is only one mind that must speak in this hour. We have heard the winds of the mind speak, have drawn us in all kinds of directions. We have been twisted. We have been baffled. We have been overrun. We have been seduced. We have been overcome. Now we must understand there is only one mind. That mind that was in Yeshua HaMashiach, it overcame life to surrender unto death. It overcame death to personify life. It personified life to show us the power of the Most High. We need that mind. It was that mind that spoke and said after three days and three nights you're going to rise up out of the belly of the earth and the powers of hell, the weapons of darkness uh, that formed against you to bring you into the captivity of the bondage of death where you fear death, uh, it shall not be at all. You shall raise up in the power of my might because I have spoken it. If he spoke that to cause that body to raise up, don't you understand he must speak his mind today? In order for the dry bones, the dead body of Yisrael to rise up. We are dead because of our transgressions against Yah. We love sin and we love the pleasure of sin. We have not chosen to endure the afflictions of Yah with the people of Yah like Moshe. That he denied, he denied the pleasures of sin for a season that he may endure the plight with the house of Yisrael, that the name of the Most High will become presonymous with a people that he had elected. And they will not be twisted nor tortured. This Jezebel has tortured our minds, has given us a delusion of a hoish religion created in the minds of wicked men, corrupt, damnable men, an image of this vile faggot dog that they call Jesus. That is their Jesus. That is the prasara of him. I don't give a damn if you don't like it. And so the wicked imagination, we will bring that to a point today and show you. This image that Hashatan has created, it was methodically conceived in the mind of wickedness. It was created to allure the masses of the people by their own religious self-grandizing ways and to find the remnant of Yisrael that they would blaspheme against the name of Almighty Yah. When the one spoke against Yah, they ran to the messenger Moshe and he said unto them, put him in prison. Separate yourself from him that the mind of Almighty Yahweh will be shown unto us on this matter. And Yah's mind must be shown to us on the matter. Because this damnable, corrupt attitude that is produced by this whore to cause us to blaspheme Almighty Yah, it is detriment to the house of Yisrael. 
There is no forgiveness for that. And we have better partake in all of our ignorance. Now it's time that we rise up by the light of the testimony of Yeshua. And that all of that light goes before us. He is not a damn Christo. He is not a damn Christ. He is the Hamashiach. He is the messenger. He is the anointed one of the Most High Yahweh, the creator of all things. He is the one that has bara. He is the bara. He is the creator. He is the one that created the illuminaries in all things. He has a name. And the enemy through this whore. As we saw in this uh, diaspora to this nation when the multitudes came, she went forth with a religious structure. And she mandated that in one of the most notorious whores uh, upon the planet, and that is the Roman holotry of every kind of adulterous wickedness there is. To bring all the minds together under this uh, practice of religion. Uh, to give them some kind of self-appeasing. Uh, that they eat their little waffle and they drink the damn false wine. Uh, that that is alright. And through the disguise of religion, uh, this whole went forth uh, to blaspheme the name of Almighty Yah, to eradicate his name out of the chronicles. Uh, and out of this, this damnable twisted faggot dog... Uh, was raised up that they called Jesus. And that is the name of that demonic power. I don't give a damn what we think. We were in error. Yeah. Just like Israel. We were wandering in wilderness. It amazes me that these damn heathens. That's what they are. They call themselves Hebrew Israelites. And yet. When you come to the Chinese in this nation. That all the Chinese gods have Chinese names. When you come to the Japanese gods of this nation and the world, all the Japanese gods have Japanese names. When you come to the Hindu and the Hinduism, the religion, all of their gods have Hindu names, not Indian names, but Hindu names. You go to the Philippines and that language, all of their gods have a Philippinian name. Yet in this damn wicked nation, through this Latin Greek translation, and through this bastardized wicked language we call English, then they raise up this damnable false image in this name. And yet those that say they're Hebrews, our forefathers, they were of Ibri. They were the Ibri. They were Hebrews. They were Ibri. They were out of the bosom of the son of Shem, who was known as Esau. And they had an Hebrew identity. How in the hell are you going to say you're Hebrew and you got a Anglo-Saxon pagan damnable name for your master and redeemer, this was a covenant effort of the wicked. In a short time to bring the masses and particularly the house of Israel under the bondage of delusion in their damn twisted minds that had turned away from Yah. And they imagined their gods just like when they came out of the wilderness. They imagined their gods and they made them a god. And that's what this wicked dog Hashatan did. He made you a damn god. He gave you the Lord. He gave you the Jesus. He gave you the Christ. They say they're Hebrews. They're of Ibri. The people from beyond. They say that they are of Ibri. They are Hebrews. And yet it amazes me the damnable ignorance of this generation. And yet they have an Anglo-Saxon. English bastardized name of what they call, quote, God. Damn every God. You know my senses and my feelings on that. I use that for expedience for your knowledge, for you to understand. They are ignorant and they are laws. Only the remnant, the small, the yatcha, the just a little small remnant of your shall be your shach. You're going to save his house. Hallelujah. You're not saving no damn one. You save yourself from this unto what this wicked generation. It's going to take preaching that is much more profound than this shallow weak man here. 
It's going to take something to cause our, cause our hearts to fear you and to stir something in us and get the damn wickedness out of you. Well, you say, damn, damn you then. I say it that way. We have damn you. We have, uh, we, have, uh, we, have uh, we have objected to what he commands us. We have spoken evil against him. Oh, I will, you are a liar. The scripture says that uh, Yisrael has spoken evil of Almighty. Yah. We have all spoken evil of him. We have spoken lies against him. And all of his love kindness that did not change our minds. So he has chosen a way that is foolish, outlandish. It looks stupid. This is the only way he's going to deliver the house of Yisrael. Hallelujah. I don't want a damn English God. I don't want no God. And these ignorant fools, you see them everywhere in the large cities and uh, the metropolitans and the metroplex. Uh, and they're talking about KJV or King James uh, was a man of color. Well, okay, let it be that. Uh, they, in their own damnable ignorance, uh, he did not speak in an English tongue. I will, my friend. Uh, every nation in this wicked nation that say they know their quote God, unquote, uh, they have an identity to the speech of that people. Uh, all the Chinese gods are known in their language, the Mandarins uh, or the dialect of their language. Uh, all the gods of India, 16 different major languages, uh, they're known in that you go to Africa on that continent, uh, you go to the Kiswahili, that God is the God of the Kiswahili. And yet this damnable, twisted, wicked people, his people are destroyed. We are people that's ignorant. A true messenger we damn and we ostracize, we kick him to the curve because he doesn't talk like the masses he doesn't speak like the rest of them he deals with the thing that is at the core of the whole matter that is the sin the hatha the hafim the sin of Yisraya. we blatantly transgress against him i'm not going to slow down you can't weaken me nothing weakens me I don't give a damn what the ordeal is, circumstances. You will not buy me that way. No one. I want to reiterate just one verse, what it says here. In the book of Weyira, uh, we in the book of Leviticus. Chapter 24. You that had joined us on the live broadcast, greetings in Yeshua's name. I'm hoping one day, can I say this, that yeah. It is amazing that the people will join us every Shabbat and during the week, and they will not even assist in helping to strengthen this. Now, you are here, my Ema. You see what we have in just a small little crowd. So the little finances that it takes, what we are able to procure, it takes that to keep this abreast and keep this afloat. And they will listen. And they will not send one damn nickel to help to us to stay on the line. It costs for us to even be on U Street. And not only that, but if they would just be faithful, that we could pay for U Street, and you would not even have all the commercials and the folly that comes along uh, with the free service. I don't like that. There are those that have written to me and say, I won't even watch it because of all, you have naked women and everything on there, some of the most filthiest things. And they will not watch it because of that. Now, so you that are extortioners, and you sit there, and you consume, and you eat much, and you don't give a damn, the way you care about the message of your shoe is the way you care about your own nefesh, your own life. You're very fragile, you're weak, and you're not strong at all. Now, I want you to begin to assist and to help. We're not beggars. And I don't beg you for one nickel. Nor one brown penny. Hallelujah. And these are the individuals that will not send one nickel. When they come, they expect you to house them, to feed them. No, it will not be like that. I will not. I said to my Ema, she was somewhat afraid to ask. I said, for her kindness and the kinds of offerings she sends here, I would be less than the, an individual of any integrity if I did not accommodate her in the best of our ability with hospitality and service. I will be a wicked dog. And that I am not. That I am not. You call me anything you want to, but that I am not. Hallelujah. Yeah. Have you fallen? Ask yourself the question, have you fallen? 
and see how far you've fallen from, all right? And then when you began to rectify that, then you can ask me where I've fallen from, okay? You must first of all rectify your own self. It says here in the book of Weyira, I want to bring out this point in a way that is simple with a much truth of its basis. It says here in Weyira, Chapter 24, one verse I want to read, and verse 12. And they put this man in prison in the ward, that the mind of Yah might be shown them. They brought every thought, everything unto the subjection of the captivity of the Torah of Yah, that the Torah of Yah in a living way may speak unto them now that's what we must begin to do we must bring everything things subjected unto the law of the torah of almighty yah even when our natural man rises up in the concepts of its own imaginations and thoughts we must bring that unto the subjugation with great authority under the torah of almighty yah you can never Resist her, Satan. You can never resist his power unless you first of all submit unto the Torah of Yah. Then you resist her, Satan, and he must flee. If you do not submit unto the mind of Yah, there is only one mind that can challenge that mind. There is only one mind that can subdue that mind. There is only one powerful mind that speaks to that mind and it brings it down to the gates of hell. That's why Yeshua said when he tried him, he spoke to the mind of Yah. And now we have the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach. If thou be the son of Yah, if you be the one that he has sent, uh, then cast yourself down from this high place. Uh, for he has given his melechim, uh, those messengers charge over you. Uh, least that any time in your walk, uh, you should stop or fall down or scuff your foot. That they will bear you up at any time. No, it is the Torah. It is the word that bears Yisra'yab. And that is what Hashotan is trying to eradicate out of our bosom. That's why our imaginations take charge. They said, put him in prison. That Almighty Yahweh may, may reveal the substance of his mind. That is simply saying that the concept of Yah. The revelation of Almighty Yahweh will be revealed in a way that they are refined in our minds that we understand them precisely. That the reading of the concept of this Torah is made so plain that everyone that hears the messenger speak, when Moshe speaks as to the command of Yah, what we should do in this matter, there will be one cohesive mindset and that will be the revelation or the revealing of Yah's mind. That's what we need. We don't need the divergence. We don't need here those there and those there and those there and there, those there. We must all speak the same thing uh, because the Torah speaks the same thing. Uh, there is no divisiveness in the Torah at all. Uh, there is only one name. Damn the gods, damn the lords, damn the priests, damn the Christ, damn them all. There's only one name. Hallelujah. He did not give that unto the Englords. Uh, he gave it unto the Hebrews, the people of his covenant. Uh, he spoke to them in a language that was clear. How the hell are you going to have an English name and say you're praising the Most High? It's a lie from hell. His name doesn't change. Not at all. Hallelujah. This is a masterful plan of Hashatan Himi Yisraya to create the spirit of blasphemy. Because you know when you blaspheme, not and that is the form whereby we despise his name, we reject his name, we reject his truth. There is no forgiveness for that sin. You're not going to be forgiven. When one blasphemes these damn Jesus pumpers and Christo pumpers, they're enemies of Yah. When you blaspheme his name, when he speaks his name, we better hear what Yah says. We search for the mind of Yah, but that's not what we have done. I want to read quickly, as Zachary Ramayah did on 
I want to impose a few verses before I go into the depths of another direction, all right? It is still the same source. We have not sought the mind of Yah. This is the mind that we have sought, all right? It says here in the book of Bereshit, Bereshit, Genesis chapter 5, chapter 6, verse 5. I want to move expeditiously here. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. It says, and Yahweh, Almighty Yah, he ra'a, he saw, he watched, and he observed the wickedness of man, and Yah saw that the evilness of man was wrath. It was great. It was much. It was exceeding. Uh, that the wickedness of man was great in the old land. And Yah says, and that every, not some, he said, every, call, the sum of his nature, the sum of his thoughts, the totality of man, that every thought or every yet sir, every imagination, every graven image, everything that he created in his mind, every concept that was created in the mind of man, of his love was only evil continuously. Every concept, Every image, every type of God worship, it was only evil continuously. And we allow this yet, sir, this concept of our mind, our imagination to create things. Do you not see how it elevates itself from one evil to one evil to one evil? And your concepts and your thoughts and your intellectual managing of your mind, it is only evil. You've never experienced that, sir? You never experienced that. You began to imagine one thing that lead to something else, lead to something else, lead to something else. And you find yourself out of the presence of Yah. I don't give a damn who you are, you've experienced that. We could sit here on melancholy and, and you that are listen, you've experienced that. In every thought, every thought of our mind is evil. You think that that is the mind that produced unto Yisra'ah the concept, the beauty, the identity of Yah through this damnable blasphemy object that this wicked mind has created? No, sir, no, ma'am. It is not Yisra'ah. Every thought, every concept, Every yet, sir, every imagination, every intellectual design, every kind of thing that was created in its mind was only evil continuously. You create thoughts in your mind, we create dreams, we create images, we create things that we lust, we desire, we do that, Yisraya. And Yah said it was only evil. He said, I repent, I am sorrowful that I made something that is so vile and so wicked. And from that point, the first thing that man began to do is he began in the mind or the concept of that imagination, he began to create gods. He began to create gods. Now that's the damnable twisted mind of the Christ or the Christ. And it is the true God of this religion. He is the true Lord, this Phoenician, uh, this male deity. Uh, and that's what they have made their Christo. He is of the image of the Phoenician gods, Yisraeah. For what purpose? For Yisraeah to blaspheme the name of Yah. When you blaspheme Yah's name, we blaspheme the courts of Yah. Then we are the enemies of Almighty Yah. We are not his friends. Yahshua said, you're no more my servants, my heaven. He said, but you are my friends. Because you being servants, you don't know what Yah's doing. But I tell you what he is doing to prepare you for the time that is ahead. There is a blasphemy on the earth today. That's why they had to rid the camp of this one that spoke against the name, the beauty, the throne of Yah. That spoke with defiance that uh, that mock Yah. And that's what these damnable twisted beasts are doing. They're mocking the name of the Most High. They're mocking his name. So the thoughts are evil. So if the thoughts are evil continuously, then we see that metastasize or the progression of that even after the days of Noah 
We saw the same thing. Do we not see it in its most grandizing form today in this uh, putrefied whore and this cauldron of holotry uh, in this nation, America, whereby it produced these anti-Hamashia minds against Yah, the throne of Yah, the beauty of his kingdom. Do we not see that Yisra'ya in every kind of damnable institution they do that? Uh, in your workplaces, in your schools, uh, in your colleges, in your associations, it produced that and don't even speak of talking about the most high in his purest form they will abandon you they will ostracize they will kill you I don't give a damn if it's mama daddy son daughters it makes no difference at all you shall be hated of all men your sure set my dad is a man your dad is a man your mother is a woman he said for my name's sake Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the thoughts are only evil. I want to show an example of that. Hallelujah. What Dawid says unto Shalom as he exhorts him here in, in first or uh, first Dibari Chayim in First Chronicles 28:9. I want you to hear this, Yisraya. I have the sense of his fire in my belly today. Damn the wickedness of darkness. Hallelujah. It says here in the book of 1 Chronicles 28, 9, he says, And to you, Shalomo, my son, he said, first of all, I want you to yada. I want you to recognize the hand of Yah. And when you recognize the hand of Yah, Yisrael, that's what yada is. He said, I want you to acknowledge that. And when you acknowledge that it is the hand of Yah, I want you to confess, confess it. And you, Shalomo, my son, you, Yahweh, the sovereign master of your avat, he said, uh, and abad, you must serve him. When we serve Yah, we must labor in Torah. We must work in the concepts and the precepts of Torah. We must allow them to work out the power of his hand to save us. From this wicked generation. Is your sure not the word made flesh? It is the power of that living word that saves us. We cannot, we cannot go serenading. And passing around and mincing. With tinkling of our wicked feet. Running to evil and to do every kind of damn wicked thing. He said no my son. He says you must abide. You must labor. All that is to labor, to work, to work laborious. He says that's what serving is. We must always be on guard against our flesh continuously. We must always be on guard against our imaginations. They creep up like weeds, don't they? They defile us. They speak to our minds. They alter us. They change us. They delude us, Yisra'ya. And that's the truth. We must labor. I watched the bees as our Zachim Yaramaya was speaking uh, on the Cafe Imat. I watched the bees as they were laboring. Uh, there are not many of the honeybees, but these large black bomber bees, the black one and the yellow one. And as we were picking okra on yesterday, they will not bother you. Unless you encroach on their territory, of course, I don't bother them. I will cut watermelons and cantaloupes. I will open them up and put them out say, come on, you all are laboring hearts. And I want you to get some of the sweetness of these melons that you are pollinating and cause them to grow so sweet and so luscious and so beautiful. So I will cut melons and I will cut cantaloupes and things for the bees and I will set them out so the bees can get the juices of the melons. And they're happy because they have labored much more harder than I have. They're there consistently 24-7. They're there laboring. They're not even resting on the Shabbat. And and yesterday as I was pulling the okra, I felt this fire began to burn in my hand. And yet this was, there was this large bee. He had grabbed hold of me somehow, some way. I had infringed upon his place of residency. And the fire began to shoot up through my right arm. And I could sense it in my mind. I could feel it in my heart. Of course, he's doing us a wonderful service. So I couldn't kill the bad boy. I, I simply want you to get off my hand. You have pumped enough of your fire in me. So as he began to pump his fire, he, he was causing me, oh, what is this? Of course, it was my friend, the bee. 
No, I didn't kill him. I, I pull him off and say, finish your job, because he's laboring. We must come to that point that anything of salt, and that is an assault on Yah. He must take the vengeance of his mind upon that, and I take the vengeance of Yah's mind upon our wickedness, our slothful, wicked, damnable, twisted ways. And so I was not mad at the bee because he was doing us a great service. Go ahead, my friend. I can't kill you because your lifespan is short. You're going to produce even more. Take your journey. You know what you need to do, and we know, and we must understand what we must need to do uh, in the presence of Yah. We must come before him uh, in his mind. We can't come before him in our imagination. Do we see the duplicity of our imagination? We come into the tabernacle, everyone thinking on something that pertains to them. We ought to be of ichad, one mind. Yeah. One mind. That this is a day of shachah. That we come to fall and to fall prostrate. Before Yah to hear him speak, to recognize our wickedness and the sins that have prevented us from bringing the pure offering unto Yah. That our hearts are clean and right, that we can bring the pure offering of Torah unto Almighty Yah. He admonished Shalom. He says, I want you to abide to serve him. He said, with the Shalom, with the perfect. He did not say with the incomplete, but a perfect love. He said, you must serve Yah with a sholem. What is the perfect heart, Yisrael? When there is a compliancy in our bosom to obey all that Yah has commanded us according to the covenant rites with Abraham. That is sholem. He said, that is the heart, that your heart is always Delighting. He says, uh, with the perfect heart and with a hafetz, a willing. When someone is willing, uh, there is a happiness there. There is a delight. There is a pleasure in it. And we must serve Yah that way. He said, with this kind of mind and this kind of heart. He says, uh, and with a willing mind, with a willing nefesh, uh, the nefesh, the life. Uh, the mind is the life of Yisra'ya. Yahshua is our life, is he not? Do we not have the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach? Was not the life or the power of the high heel, the strength, the substance of Yah in the body of Yahshua? Did he not have the mind of Almighty Yah? That's what the mind is. It is life. That's why the enemy has done all he could to dilute us and pollute us and to create the spirit of blasphemy among Yisrael that we blaspheme the name of Almighty Yah because hell the damn white Jesus is different than the black Jesus. You understand? Hell the same damn white Jesus was created whereby the black Jesus did not even associate with. This is a damnable twisted creation of this damn twisted white mind. I don't take one word back. It's not the creation of the mind of Yah because the mind of Yah created his Hamashiach. He was sealed by Yah. He had the anointing of Yah. This is created by a damn twisted whore, a, a mind of imagination, a mind just like Herod went forth to try to kill every child under two to see if he could get the zira, the seed of Yah. And we have the same thing today uh, in the proliferation of every kind of abomination of adulterous, wicked sin uh, that the young gals and the old ones uh, are becoming impregnated in killing babies like damn dogs. You go to prison for killing a damn dog. You ask Mr. Vic. He killed the damn dog. You that are the dog lovers, I tell you what, when they come on our property and kill our chickens, we kill them. Now you take that to the humane society. Damn the humane society. You kill a damn dog, you go to prison. You kill a child or baby in the womb, uh, you're congratulated. You're esteemed. You do what this damn the Jezebel down here in Florida did. You kill a baby, wait 30 days, and the twisted damn the mind of this religious Christian generation say that there is no preponderance of evidence of truth that she killed the baby. The dirty whore killed the baby. The dirty whore killed the child. That's what the dirty Jezebel did. You can call her whatever you want to. She's less than a female dog. Were well, you cursed on last week? Lies, I don't curse. I don't profane Yah. 
She's just that. She's less than a dog. It's one thing that a dog will do if the, if the pup is deformed, it's not going to live, it will eat the pup. This damn Jezebel, this torted whore, she has people sending her money, and you damn wicked people will not send me a nickel to, to, to help those in Africa and help those in other nations of the world. And there are people sending this dirty whore money. There are men that want to marry her. You got to be a damn twisted man to want that. You're not a man. The power of a man is the strength and the testimony of your shoe and his bosom. You're just a boy with the apparatus of a man. That's all. Hallelujah. I don't make many friends. And those that listen, they eventually fall off because they don't like my approach. Because they don't want their sins to be revealed. They don't want their wickedness to be revealed. They want someone to s s smooth stroke them. And stroke them and tell them they're nice. We're not nice people. We're cruel to Yah. And if we're cruel to Yah, we're cruel to each other. We're not nice people. There's only one that is tough. Hallelujah. And that's Almighty Yah. When we get to the point that we're tough, we will know we have the mind of Yah. We have the nature of Almighty Yah. He wants us to be perfect to mean just like he is, doesn't he? He has not given us a mandate that is not accomplishable. And because of our damn wicked imaginations, we defy him. We say we cannot do it. I can do all things through the power of the mind of your sure Hamashiach that brings the revelation of your strength to my body. Hallelujah. We can sing the song 99 and a half. We'll not do it. I can't be the mean to offer to remind us. And if you think that it is some kind of a job terminology, it is to your own deceit. He said to him, you serve Yah with the perfect heart. You serve him with the perfect mind. You serve him with the perfect or complete nephesh. Your life is around him. Your substance, your will, your purpose. Everything you do is Yah. In the morning is Yah. Noon is Yah. In the nighttime is Yah. Hell our mind in the morning is wickedness, in the noonday is wickedness. And nighttime is corrupting every kind of vile, damnable sin there is. We satisfy our imagination with the lies of the damnable televisions and the twisting of our minds. That's what we satisfy with. We don't satisfy with Torah. We don't satisfy with the mind of Yah. We satisfy with the wicked works of Hashatan because that's what he is. He did not abide in the Torah of Yah. This image has been created to dilute the minds of the masses and especially for the purpose to find the remnant of Yisrael. To make them blaspheme, yeah. Whereby there is no forgiveness. Listen to what he says here now. Listen to what he says. He said, you serve Yah. He said, for Yah is the one that darash. He searches. He inquires. He's inquisitive. That's what the Torah does. In First Chronicles 28, 9. The, the, the Torah searches. It searches our hearts. It searches our mind. It searches for the filth. That we may come before the full. Or the fullness of the righteousness of Yah. And that we may be washed and cleansed. By the full. Hallelujah. You're sure the fullness of the sadiq, the righteousness of Almighty Yah. For Yah, this is what he does. He searches, uh, he darash, he seeks with a with careful mandate. Uh, he searches all living of the hearts. Uh, and he understands all, yes, uh, all the imagination, the images, uh, the graven images of our mind. They're uh, evil. Yeah. He says, son, Shalomo. If you seek him, he will be found of you. He said, but if you azab, if you forsake Yah, if you desert him, if you neglect the counsel of Yah, if you abandon the counsel of Yah, this is emphatically. He said, if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Id domim olam viat. He said, but adds, he will cast you off perpetually. He said, nothing will change. He will cast you off. And that is what the enemy wants us. He creates this intellectual imagination. And the world teaches us, if you can imagine it, it is conceivable. And they are doing it. They imagine killing people by the masses. And they are doing it. They imagine raping the little daughters. And they are doing. They are imagining setting up one of the most vilest, wicked things before the people of this nation. A damn twisted, 
sodomite, birthed out of hell, birthed out of the belly of Hashatan, and creating an image that is acceptable, it's all right, they're beautiful, they're not, even as a damn dog, they're not beautiful. They're damn sodomites, they're beasts, they're wicked, they're vile, they're not going into the kingdom. You're not going to transform one damn sodomite. When a man reached that point, you has given that damn beast over unto that sodomite spirit. Don't even touch me, man. That's why you don't lay hands suddenly on no man. You don't ever touch every man. Your daughters, don't shake hands with every damn man. Don't even touch men. I will, my friend, that I shall do. Hallelujah. And these damn sodomites, they're giving you this today, that it's all right. Hallelujah. That they will speak blasphemy against Yah and say that that book is not worth a damn. That's what they're saying. Oh, I'm blunt. I'm straightforward. Yah is blunt. He is straightforward. Yes, said David, you tell this boy, I will cast him off forever. That's why he sealed in his bosom a remnant, just a small remnant. I'll get back on that teaching. I want to teach and to preach to us. Mazakain take it a little farther. Our teachers, they take it a little farther. Not only that, that it will stir up your mind that you would, you would train your mind as we would train our children. In the way that we should go. And if we train that childlike mind. Do we not act childish from here? Train a child in the way that it should go. And when he is old he will not depart. We train this in the ways of Yah. It won't depart from the mandate of Yah. Because it is not trained that our minds. Uh, it, they are always uh, being removed away from Yah to our imaginations. Are they not? And we spend more time on imagination than what Yah commands. If you forsake him, he's going to move himself away from you. Hallelujah. If you forsake him, if you azab, if you forsake Yah, you cast him aside. If you desert Yah, he said, I'm warning you, son, he will desert you as well. He understands your yetza, your imagination. He understands your images. Did not Shalomo... In the midst of his defying of Torah, he brought all kinds of women, wives. He built up the groves unto Balaam, to their Lord Jesus, to Balaam, to Baal, to the lords. You know the white lord is different than the black lord, and the Chinese lord is different than the Mexican lord. You understand that? They got the damn Lord Jesus, but they're all different. Hallelujah. This Torah is for the stranger and Yisrael. Hallelujah. You walk into some of these dirty whole houses, they will look at you like, what in hell are you doing here? There's one down the street whereby people of your same color where they gather. I've heard that from many. Hallelujah. And that's a fact, Yisrael. We can deny it. We can try to scuttle bottle it. But that's a reality in a place of Holotry and a cold drum of every kind of damn wickedness in this nation. He's going to bring it down. And these damned but twisted gold and silver thumpers, they're damn liars. He's going to bring this whole earth under derision. He's going to cause the agony of blackness to fall upon all men. And those that reject his Torah, they shall, they shall receive the af, the great resentment and the keen anger of Almighty. God's going to be poured out on this damn wicked earth. And you're not going to escape. The only way you're going to escape because you have the edor, the testimony of Yeshua Hamashiach. And you don't love this damn life unto death. You understand? And they overcame by the dam, the blood, the power of the testimony of the dam of Yeshua Hamashiach. His whole objective is to, uh, is to lay his laser wickedness uh, on those that keep Shema, Nasa, that guards uh, the Torah, the mind of God. The Torah is the mind of God that speaks to us. Uh, 
We must guard that. We guard every kind of damn wickedness and every sin. We won't guard the Torah. Everything but Torah. We guard the wicked sons and daughters, mom and daddy, wicked wife, wicked husband. We don't give a damn about the mind of Yah. He said, if you forsake me, Yah says that uh, I will cast you off forever. This is the mind of Yah. This dirty whore tells us in the imagery of our own minds that is create this imagery that you are right. We're not right. We're a long way from home. We're a long way. It's by the hasid of Yah that he allow us to walk this road. We have fallen. We come short every second of his beauty. We are the light of the world. We are the city that sit upon the hill. That's what Yisrael is. We should be a rich blessing to the governments and nations of the earth. We are a sugula, a peculiar people. He set us above all nations and all ethnicity. That's what Yah did. You got a problem, take it up with him. I have no problem with that. Hallelujah. Shirach, he speaks to us profoundly. He says this, Shirach 37.3. He says, O oh, evil imagination. He's talking to the imagination of Yisraeli, his own concept. He says, O oh, evil imagination, from where you come from to cover the land with deceit, with Shekha. That's what the imagination does. He said, that's what Shirak says. He says, O oh, evil imagination, from where you come from to cover the land with lies and deceit. You see how the evil imagination of the religious posturing and prostitution and selling of a nation and a people to try to bring them under the subjugation of a shatan. It was that damn imagination that filled the line with deceit. We have all, because the heart is deceitful of all things, is it not? And desperately wicked. We have all been caught up under that deceit, under the creation of this damn false, damn lie that is called Jesus that is called Christ, that is called Christo. We are a Hebrew, we are the Ibri people of Yah. We are the people from beyond the mind or the concept of man. We are the people that are beyond the laws of man. Our laws come from the Most High. Yeah. Damn their gods. That's what Ibri means, from beyond. His mind is beyond the imagination of man. His concepts are beyond our concepts. Uh, our way seems right unto us. But the end of our ways are destruction and death. It produces evil. Hallelujah. It does not produce the Sadiq. Of Almighty Yah. O oh, evil imagination. He says, from where have you come from to cover, to cover, to cover the land with deceit, with shekha, lies of deception. That's what the imagination does. It deceives you. And that is what Hashatan has done to say, we're going to set up this mind of imagination. So the television was one of the most powerful creations to tell you a vision of a lie and you ponder lies all day long. That amazes me that we don't give a damn about the Most High. I will say that. I'm not, no, I'm not khala. I'm not cursing my Abba. He tells us we don't give a damn. He said we love him with our damn feth. Our mouth speaks great grandizing words. He said, but your love is far, far from me. Did he lie? 
He did not lie. I will, my friend. He's immune from lies. Because he is the great I am, he is the mighty one. What he speaks is the truth. Every word he speaks is truth. Let me be the liar, but let him be a man. Hallelujah. So this is what has happened that the imagination of Hashatan has covered the land with deceit with lies. And the people are deceived today. We have all been under that delusion of deception, have we not? We'll follow the deceit of lies that the heart was deceitful above all things. And in our own mind, it was desperately wicked. We defied Yah. We said that it didn't take that. We don't need that. We don't have to do that. Lies, Yisra'ya. And so what this master for one did, he created an image of this damn twisted beast called Christ, Christo, this blasphemer of everything that is pure and right. And he began to create this image in the mind of every nation, every people, say that uh, you can paint him whatever color you want to, but he is ours. Uh, he is our white mind God. Uh, you will serve us. You will be subject unto us. You will obey our mandates, our laws, our perception of everything that is right. Uh, we will dictate. We will show you. And you will follow through on that. Uh, and from our doctrine, you will create doctrines uh, of your own coloration. All right? Uh, you can say it any damn way you want to steal the truth. Uh, so it creates this damn wicked image. There's nothing more vile than what we call the white man. It transcends uh, every damn nationality, every ethnicity, every color of people, every color of skin. It's a mind that is superior to the mind of Yah. That's the damn truth. You got a problem with that? There's something wicked in you. These men are not going to tell these preachers in the Baptist whole house that's a damn lie. They're not going to do that. That's a lying image. They're not going to do that. That's why there's a such sensitivity to nations and people when they see this damnable image uh, and minds uh, aggressively want to protect that damn thing. Damn that wickedness. I spit on it. I curse it in your surest mighty name. How about that, you damn Jesus thumpers and your Christo thumpers? Hallelujah. They say they're Hebrews. They're liars. They're full of deceit. Chinese speaks the Mandarin. Huang Guang Hai Hai. He calls on his God in his Mandarin language, doesn't he? Oh, oh I, 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 I speak English, but, but my God, oh, it is Bakung Hai Hai. Who? Bakung Hai Hai. Tell down, my friend. And yet they say they're Hebrews and speak and call upon their creator for, by a damnable, twisted, paganized, Latin Greek, bastardized English vernacular. In hell they shall lift their eyes. You can pretend all you want to. All the ways of Yah, they are right. Not some. Everything. That's why we're twisted. Homes are messed up. Wives are messed up. Husbands are messed up. And children are baffled as hell. We've gone away from the concept of Yah. What a damn faggot is accepted is sodomite. Yah said that one, kill it. It's a spirit of bewitching. They're bewitching the minds today that even these damn dogs of politicians, they crumble at the sight of a faggot. And yet they see a man oppressed, they say, hell, put more on him. It is truth. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter, Jeremiah 7, 24. I want to move quickly. I want to get into this concept. I won't finish this week, but I will finish it one week in the, in the future. I'm going to finish this next week, but I must... Go here. Turn quickly to Jeremiah. Yah says, chapter 7, verse 24. But they, Shema, they hearkened, they did not listen. They did not listen with the mindset to hear what I say, that they will obey it with great obedience and with great submissiveness. But they hearkened not 
nor did they incline their ears in their ear. He said, but they walk in the counsels, the moetza, the counsel, their own plans. They created their own principles, their own devices. They walked in the counsels and in the imagination, shiriruth, the imagination, their stubbornness, the hardness, and the wickedness of their evil heart. And then they went, oh, they went backwards and not they did not go forward. When a man walks in the imagination of his own mind, that's what Yisra'ya did. And this is us here. Yehuda Ephraim, we have walked in the imagination of our own counsel. We have not gone forward. We have not excelled to the pinnacle that Yah wants us because of our own imagination. And the enemy did a masterful job to create an image to imagine that this is what the Most High, this is what Yoshua HaMashiach, what he looks like and what he represents. This effeminate, twisted little faggot thing. That's what it is, a damn fag. That's what the fags should be in these whole houses. I heard a man say one time that uh, this dog here in Atlanta invited him to come. This man that they call Eddie Long. And he says to me, I'm going to take care of you well when you come. I'm going to do you right. Money is not an issue. He said, but it's one thing I ask you don't do. Don't mess with my sissies. Well, the revelation is revealed that that's all. He was a damn sissy too. And these sissies serenade themselves and they give and they bring the monies. And these damn dirty whole houses, you will not hear these men. You will not hear T.D. Jakes. You will not hear Benny Hinn. You will not hear this little gritty damn devil down there in Houston, Texas, the old sting, the old devilish wicked one. You will not hear Creflo Dollar. You will not hear any of them talk about the faggotite and this wicked, damnable twistedness uh, that is among men today. These damn dogs bring in every kind of imagination. You will not hear men talk about that today. You will not hear them... Uh, Go against that with great agony of Yah's wrath in his mind. You won't hear them speak out against that, Yisra'ya. These damn the Omega whole houses, that's what they're full of faggots. They're singing, serenading. They're raising up faggot little boys and they're allowing these damn dirty bastards to adopt little children to sodomite them. That a child doesn't even know the difference between a man and a woman. That girls are loving girls. Why? And boys, boy, there's a reason why. We have gone away from the truth of his name. We've gone away from the truth of his people. We don't want to identify his people. We don't want to identify his nation, his country, his city. We don't want to identify with Yah. And because we have gone away from truth and we have sought counsel of our own damnable wicked hearts. In our own imagination, in our own concept of our own intellectual development, as we think we possess, we have blasphemed, we have ostracized and mocked the Most High One. So whereby a damn faggot dog is serenading before the people with high honor, whereby a slutty whore can sleep with every man in whore ward out there. She's raised to the Cassandra, what they call a star. These are star worshiping damn devils. You understand? And they have you worshiping damn stars, these damn filthy, sluttish, hoish, Jezebel, pumped up titties, pumped up buttocks, fake as hell. And you marvel at something of that damn fake unreality? What kind of damn simple mindset and stupidity do we as a nation of Yisrael, we need to come out from among these damn heathens uh, and separate yourself from their damn wicked ways. Uh. Yes. They are a, a dirty whore. And you want to see the whore. And she walks down the street, you will do all you can to see the dirty whore. 
But the messenger of Yah, you will not even leave out of your house to come hear the word of Yah. Unless it is spoken in a way that rattles us, we're no different than any other man. His imat must rattle us. And that damn dirty darkness you've hit, it's going to find it. It's a fire to eradicate, to consume everything that is not like him. Hallelujah. And we need that fire in our nefesh, in our bone. We need to shut it out. We may hear the voice of Yah. We've heard every kind of wicked voice. We need to hear his voice. I speak to you the mind of Yah. These are not my words, but these are Yah's words. He said that because of our imaginations, of our own love, we have gone to Ahor, Ahor. We've gone backwards. We've turned away from Yah. We have literally backslidden on the principles of Omar Yah. He says, and not forward, not ponim. We have not presented ourselves. The word ponim, uh, I was kind of startled when I saw that the other day when I looked at this word. The word ponim means really the face, the presence. So we have gone away from the presence of Yah. Can I tell you how we know that we will do things that we're not even ashamed to do the damn wickedness we do? There is no fear what we do. We're not, we don't even fear Yah. There was a time a nation of people, the daughters of Tizayon, the men, there was a fear. That even the most vilest of man, he had a fear to do certain things. Uh, in the presence of the Zakin, the elders that knew Yah or did not know him, we don't give a damn today at all. Period. There was a reverence, there was a fear, there was an honor. So we have not gone to the Pondim. We have not gone to the presence of Yah. We have gone backwards. We have gone a whore. We have gone a whoring after the false gods. We have gone away from Yah, Yisrael. We are sliding backwards. We are not progressive. We are degressing. We are not standing in the might of Yahshua HaMashiach. But it is the filth and the stench of our own damn wickedness that sends an order before Yah that there is no, there is no appeasing smell that satisfies his bosom. We are sad people. We've got to go through the fire to get it right. As the old folks would say, we need some fire-breathing preachers to preach from the fire of the altar of Yah. Give me a coal of that fire in my mouth, Yah. Hallelujah. That's what we need. And when we get that, we will truly have men and not boys and beautiful daughters that the, the brightness of his Torah will shine for them and there will be a light unto the nation of what a beautiful woman is and her place. You understand? Hallelujah. 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 In chapter 9 of Yeremiah, verse 14, this is what we have done. Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 14. The mind of Yah speaks to Yisrael. Can he lie? Can he lie? Can he lie? Can he lie? He cannot lie. Yah says in Jeremiah chapter 9, 14, He said, but you, you have walked after the imagination. We don't walk after our Sherry Ruth, do we? He said, but you have walked after the imagination of your own lamb. We don't do that, do we? Do we do that? Yah said, but they, Yisrael, have walked after the imagination of their own lamb. And he says, and after Baal, after Baal, after the Lord or the Supreme One of the Phoenicians and the Babylonians, we have walked after Baal, we have walked after the Lord. We have walked after the Lord Jesus Christ. We have walked after the Lord God. We have walked after the Lord, but we have not walked after the counsel of Almighty Yah. It is not just some kind of misinterpretation here, but we have walked after our imaginations of our own hearts and after Balaam, after Baal, after the Lords, which your avat 
They have lamad. They have taught them to us. As our forefathers taught us about the Lord Jesus. He said, because your avat has taught you. Oh, how sweet the Lord is. Damn the Lord. Damn Baal. He said, you have gone after Baal. Because of your imagination. Your imagination has been shaped. It has been created by your fathers. They have lamad. They have instructed you. They have taught you. They have counseled you in the way of Baal. And so everything today is Baal. The Lord Jesus. Damn the Lord Jesus. Damn that name. Damn the significance of it. Oh, the Lord is good to me. Damn your good Lord. You're just going to bring him down to the gates of hell. Your shoes said, I came in my avat. I came in my abba. I came in my father's Hashem. He came in the same name. And so the image of the mind of this wicked and scrupulous mentality of this religious whore created in this nation, it created this damn false image. It created this image and caused this religious whore we call Catholicism. In every one of her damn wicked houses, she got these damn statues and these, and these, and their priests got this naked damn man, this effeminate faggot dog. And people bow down to that. We bow down unto the Torah of Yah. We bow in the presence of Yah. When he speaks to us, when we know that we are face to face with him, you know that he is speaking unto you. And you will know that he is speaking unto you because he makes himself known by his judgment. He said, you're not right. It is like one walking and seeing their child say, baby, your house is not, it's not right. Put on something. Do that. Do that. Come on, Yisra, Yah. He makes himself known. He sure you have the power to judge you. He has the power to put you in hell. He has power to give you life. So he lets you know off the bat, I'm the one that make assessment. You're wrong. You're wicked. You're filthy. You're dirty. Yeah. We don't have the decency we have that we think we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to have something that whereby even strangers will have the fear. There's something magnificent about them or that one or those. Hallelujah. And that's the truth, Yisraya. Hallelujah. We're an ignorant people. We're lost because we lack the da'ats, the knowledge of Almighty Yah. Our forefathers have taught us the way of Balaam, of Baal. They have taught us all those things. And the one that was the scribe for Yeremiah, Baruch, he speaks so eloquent of the nature of the matter that Yeremiah spoke of here. Second, first Baruch, chapter 1, verse 22. He says this, but every man, not some, but cool, every man followed the imagination of their own wicked laugh, of their own wicked heart. To serve gods, those gods that are estranged from Yah, to serve gods, and to do evil in the sight of Almighty Yahweh, our Almighty One. Now this is what the heart of one that would hear the words of Yeremiah, and write them down as a meticulous student would not inject his concept or his thought, his imagination. And the words flow through his bosom that every man followed uh, just like it was at the beginning to this day. We follow after our own imagination because our heart is rasha, it is wicked. It does criminal activities and practice Criminality against Almighty Yah. That's why I must lay this down. That we may understand we must seek the mind of Yah in all matters. That's why we must say, if it's your will, if it's your hafiz, if it pleases you, Yah. We've forgotten that, Yisrael, Yah. If it's your will, your hafiz, if it's your pleasure. I shall do. If it's your will, Yah. If it's your will, I will arise in the morning. If it's your will, Yah, I will go where you 
have led my heart to go, I will go. If it's your will. If it's your hafiz. If it's your pleasure. That's all the will is, the pleasure. If, it's your, if it pleases you, yeah. Hallelujah. If it pleases you, yeah, I will do that. Hallelujah. But every man follow after the imagination of his own wicked heart to serve the gods or the strangers or that which was exchanged from Almighty Yah and to do evil in the sight of Yah, our Almighty One. And that is what has happened. You got the KJV, you got the NIV, you got, the, you got every kind of damnable twisted translation there is. They remove this. You're going to have the faggot translation next. You got every kind of damn. You got the woman's translation. You got the man's translation. There is only one Torah for Yisraya and one Torah for the stranger. Same Torah. Yet they're translating it into every kind of... Uh, Little concept that uh, will satisfy the hearers uh, or the ears of those that will hear. There is no ears, no eye to hear today. We're not hearing Ya Yisraya. It's either we're hearing him or he is a liar. And I know he cannot lie. Hallelujah. We're not hearing him. And that's the truth. A prophet, a lobby today, the nation will kill him because he uproots sin. He gets down to the core of the nature of the evil imagination and the strange gods among them. And there are all kinds of strange gods today. These are fallen Melchim angels that fell in their reprisal, their uprising, Against Almighty God. That's where that damn Jesus fella came from. That's where he came from. In the line of Hashotan's masterful scheme. I'm not afraid to say that, Yisraya. You can be afraid, but I'm not. Well, you may die. Well, I will not give myself over unto much foolishness. And I will not die before my time, all right? When it's time for me to go, I'm going. And nothing is going to stop that, Yisraya. I'm not afraid to say that. This is a nation, this is a mind that has been created to assault Yah, to infringe upon Yah. There must, we must revenge that wickedness. Will you know that you have done wrong, and when you come to the conclusion I've done wrong, you must have an adversarial attack on that wickedness to avenge it with great, with great uh, a battle against it. And I'm not afraid to say it. If I die saying it, I will die saying it. Let it be so, Yisraeliah. And if I'm a servant of Yah, I will see him. I will see the presence of the Hamashiach because those that are dead shall rise first. And those that are alive will remain and they shall be caught up to meet him. So either way, I'm in a winning situation. And if I speak out of my great ignorance, then Yah will correct me. Hallelujah. He will. Hallelujah. If I was speaking out of my ignorance, then the place would be full. We will not even have room on the youth stream and everything. And that's a fact. As our precious Zachin, he reminded us that they followed him, not because of the miracles. You know why? Because Yah did not even give them ears to understand, eyes to see, to understand that this was the hand of Yah. Yah says, I have not given you ears to, to hear. Eyes to perceive and the eye to understand. He said, All the mighty things I've done, I've not allowed you to understand this was me. Hallelujah. And he has not given us that because we're rebellious people. We have created the gods. We got to denounce that damn Christo. We must denounce every stranger or strange God. The Melach will not come in the name of a God. He comes in the name of Omar, Yah. The Melach is the messenger of Yah. He is a messenger. Hallelujah. That's what he is. Quickly in the book of Romeo, as Shaul speaks unto the scattered house, Yisra'ah, oh, he speaks here so poetically, so profoundly. Romans, Romeo, chapter 1, verse 21. This is the whole thing here. 
the summation, our forefathers, they knew. They yada. Romans chapter 121. Because when they knew Yah, when our forefathers knew Yah, when they were here, many of those of the diasporas and the laborious fields of labor in the cotton fields singing Kumbaya or Yah on the sugar plantations in the isles of the sea. Kumbaya Yah, Kumbaya Yah, Kumbaya. And so to the ears of the Gentiles, the wicked ones, they knew that they were calling upon what they call a God. And the masterful scheme of Hashatan says that there's a remnant among that people. And we must do all we can. He began to dispense the powers of hell. Let us create this image out of the book, out of the Torah of life. Let us paint this faggot damn dog and present unto them a dog of an image, an effeminate dog, and to remove them, their minds, that they will teach their children. Yah commanded Yisrael to, that the Avat teach their children children, and they may teach their children children. Uh, the Torah, the beauty of Torah, the knowledge of Torah, that they will be blessed forevermore. And so what the mind of Hashatan did, he says, let us begin to eradicate this kumbaya. And they began to cry, Lord Jesus, I'm bound down at the cross and I need you to come by. And yet this wicked mind, they began to eradicate that. Whereby even when I was a young lad, even here in South Carolina, even in my, even in my, in the public school system, in the first, second, third grade, we would sing the song they call it old Negro spiritual. We would sing Kumbaya, Kumbaya. We had no identity of a meaning of what it meant or the specifics of the singing of that song, but we sang the song. And so the enemy said, I will create this image, this, this Christ or this Christ. And you say you're a Hebrew calling on a damn Jesus. You are a damn liar. You're not a Hebrew of Yisrael. You're not an Hebrew of Yah. Hallelujah. Get mad at me. I like that. I'm a warrior. I love to fight. And I'm in that mood to, to fight. You understand? That's right, hallelujah. Romeo, because that when they knew Yah, our forefathers knew Yah. They Yada, they experienced Yah. They, they knew the power of Yah among them. They did not magnify nor honor him as the most high. They didn't do that. They began to search out the, the Baal. They went a whoring on the every green tree. They looked for a different experience. Shalomo, a man that had the wisdom of Yah and allowed the gods to corrupt it, that he built groves of the Baal. He took wives of every nation to satisfy his lust, and he was still never satisfied. Hell in the grave is never full, neither can the heart of man ever be satisfied. The only thing that satisfies the longing of man is the, is the wisdom of Torah. Because it speaks beyond, it speaks beyond the, the, the concept of, of the miniature mindset of man. It speaks from the volume of Yah's mind. That's what the Torah does. Our imagination speaks from the limitation of our ability to create by what we see here or what has been created for us. You have not created one thing at all, my friend. You're taking on the pattern of someone else's wicked mind uh, and we see the metastasizing uh, or the spreading of that wickedness in every mindset, every nation of the earth today. Uh, that's why Yah said, uh, let that mind permit no fun. Let me bestow the mind that was in your sure Hamashiach yeah. be in you as well. Yeah. It's the mind of Almighty Yah. So this is a nation that has the mind of Christ, the mind of Jesus, which is a mind of blasphemy. It's a mind of blasphemy. The enemies of Yah, the evil. This is a demonic mind. They're controlled by spirits of darkness and spirits of hell. I don't give a damn who it is. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, because 
when they knew Yah, they magnified and honored him not as the Most High. Neither were they thankful. They did not give total unto Yah. But this is what happened when we don't total Yah. See, that's what the enemy keeps us from, doesn't he? We are people that are stubborn and wicked out of our own imagination. This is the mind of Yah speaking. This is the mind of Yah speaking. Because neither were they thankful. We didn't say Torah in all things. I don't care what it is. We give Yah Torah. In the midst of your great agony, you give Yah the Torah. We don't give Yah Torah today. We said it in a, such a damnable, superficial way. Tell me that. It doesn't mean a damn thing. I see the, the kindness of the little ones. You give them something. Even a popsicle. They, oh, poppy. Oh, we're going to have popsicles. They get a 10 spot or a 20 spot. They just get, whoa. They get the rotten. They hold that thing up let you see it. They don't even know the value of it. But they know it has value. We don't know the value of Torah. But it has value. We don't understand the power of Torah. But it has power. But it has power. And because they have not thanked the Lord. Oh, they want to quote, thank you, thank you, Jesus. I'd quote. But because they did not give Toda unto Yah. Because they did not give Toda, neither were they thankful. Because they were not thankful, they became vain. They became sharp. They became empty. They became vain in their imaginations because we don't give total unto Yah it's not our imagination full of vanity you will know it's vanity because it's self it's self uh, uh, desire it's all about your own wickedness isn't it I want this I want that I want those I want to do that I need more I got the hammer come on Yisraya so even our imagination is vain today Everything is sharp, is zipped. Uh, it doesn't give you nothing. It gives you no strength. It gives you no beauty. It gives you no shalom. Because we're not toda unto Yah. We do not toda Yah. We become so vain. We become so empty. In our imagination, we become vain in our imaginations, in our thoughts, in our concept. And because of that, our foolish. Never allow, never allow our foolish, wicked heart. It's a heart that is a never allow. It is a heart that is immorally wicked. It is profane. It profanes Yah. It kala, it curse Yah. You think damn is cursed, but it's not cursed. If you say damn, what the damn, the, who, who was damned? If I say who was damned, would that be all right? Is the word hell written in the book? Does y'all use it? Does it my speak it? When ignorant people, see this is what the world got us caught up on. It doesn't want us to understand the profanity that when we profane his name with this damn twisted name of blasphemy. We don't realize the state of our minds when we do that and what we were unto Yah. And by his hasset, his mercy, his tender kindness, he said, that one was mine. Although they were covered by the cloak of wickedness, I will draw them closer to me. You just draw close to me. Just draw me unto me, Yah. said, I will draw close to you. You may not understand the concepts, but if there's a desire, a will, and a purpose in your love to want to know, I will draw close. I will make my word close to your heart. I will make it known unto you, Yisrael. They became vain, they become foolish, and their love was uh, hoshaka, it was darkened, it was blackened by their own damn folly and their own wickedness. It was blackened by their own confusion. They were so confused they did not know. Because when they knew Yah, we were not glad that we knew him. We did not barak him, we did not say, oh, toda Yah, to, oh, toda Yah, toda Yah, to, oh, I barak, toda Yah. You don't even say it until we are in an environment that is conducive unto that. But when you walk, you don't say toda ya for each breath. You don't hell, you don't even look up. We're just like this wicked nation. We don't even look up and see the redemption. What? What do you mean? See your shield breaking the sky? Nah, he's coming. But to see the hand of Yah, his creation. 
But I look up and see all that he has created, that he has bara. He is the creator. It is beyond the concept of my mind. When I look at the expanse of what I see of the Hashemayam beneath his Hashemayam, my, my heart just rejoices. And, and what can I say about Torah? That's why I constantly look up. That's why I keep my eyes above. I look up to see his hands. When I'm in despair, I look up to see his hands. When I feel his oil, I look up to see his hands. When I'm down, I look up to get up. I'm not going to walk around morbid. You do the right thing. You take vengeance on you for doing the wrong thing. With the despair, I will look up and see the hand of God. That's where my redemption comes from. That's where the power of my tikvah comes from. Not from within. It comes from Almighty God. So I look up. When I'm in the garden, I look up to say, Yah, I will rock you for these bees. And for the sting, I told her, yeah, for the sting. Because I know my bomber bees at work doing what they should do. Hallelujah. I see the abundance of the okra. I see the abundance of fruit. Work on, Mr. B. Hallelujah. Let me prepare you a plate and cut you a melon and set you out a dish and set you out some melons. You go ahead and eat, Mr. B. You've labored. The labor's worth of is higher. You've labored out here. So I want to feed you some of this. Uh, you don't have to labor so hard. Just sit on this melon and just suck all you want, Mr. B. Hallelujah. 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 Because when they yada, our forefathers knew ya. And they were not thankful. They did not give y'all Torah when he corrected them. We don't give y'all Torah when he corrects us. When he brings his Musa, his counsel, we get angry as hell. We get mad at Yah. We get mad at the messenger. We get mad at the individual that show us. We think it's too hard. We get mad at them. We get upset. We don't want him to correct us. We show our wickedness. We show our distaste for Almighty Yah. For whom Yah loves, whom he has a greater hava. He corrects and he chastens betimes. And we don't give y'all Torah for that. We despise it because of the evil imagination of our heart. It is set in the motion the blasphemy of Almighty Yah. We do not render unto him the just benevolence and the just regard that is due unto him. That's why we don't give a damn and we don't thank him. I'm going through hard times. We'll thank him for the hard times. You're alive to go through hard times. I've gone through difficulties, then Todaya for the difficulties. At least you're alive to go through difficulties. I'm having battles in Barak Yah, that the mind of Yah resists the powers of hell. Just submit unto that mind. Submit. Uh, began to engage in Torah and began to strengthen your mind. You will find yourself getting up. You will find yourself being energized. You will not find yourself moping around like a little uh, fruitcake head. That's what we are. We don't want nobody to be honest with us and tell us that's our nature. There was an individual left here that had a problem with my preaching. I'm glad they did. Hallelujah. The preaching here. Isn't that amazing? And yet they will not have a problem with the wickedness of the world. They will immerse themselves in the twisted Condoluted actions and ways of the world. But yet they got a problem with this man here, the way he speaks. The mind of Yah speaks to our ill. And that's why you got a problem because Yah is identifying the ills and your corruption. You got a problem not with me. You got a problem with the Most High. That's who your problem with. You don't like what he said. In all things you give Torah, see, because they did not, because they did not, we become vain. We become vain in our own imagination. This is what this wicked world has done. Quickly for expedience, in verse 25 of the same chapter, this is what they have done. Romeo 125, who changed the truth of Yah into a lie. Now that's what Yah commanded Shaul to write. 
who changed the truth of Yah into a shekha, the, the Torah, into a lie, the damn lying image, the lies of their cross, who changed the truth of Yah into a lie, and then they shekha, they worship, and serve the creature more than the, the bara, the creator, who is blessed forevermore. So let it be fulfilled. And because of this, for this cause, Yah gave them up to vile affections for even their women. That's what they did for even the women. Yah gave them up to a vile affection because of their wicked imagination. For even their women did turn from the use. Do we not see that today? From that which is natural to a woman, burning in their own damnable wicked flesh, the same thing with the man, men with men and women with women. When there is a nation and a people that blaspheme the name of Almighty Yah, it is a nation that has no truth at all. That is why the enemy has always aggressively, you hear the people talking about the one world order, there has always been a one world government. It is under the auspice of Hashatan. I don't give a damn if it's democracy capitalists, socialists, it makes no difference at all. It is under the mandate of the wicked one of hell because he is, quote, the God of this world, unquote. He has a time, he is out to thrash out, to sift out everything that is Yisrael. And what he caused in the minds of these immature men and women uh, for them to establish their own so they go about uh, thinking that they are right and they are far from the truth. Uh, nobody hearing no one. Nobody listen to the prophet. Uh, no one wants to shuli shach of the nobi. Uh, no one wants to more. No one wants to more. No one wants to hear anything at all today. Had a man and his wife sent me this package about 68, 70 pages. If the man had sent it, I would have taken a little time. And it says on the, on the page, it says on the front page, to me, Pastor Roberts, uh, be like the Bereans. Well, hell, this man has never even spoken to me. He sent me all this writing. Shaul, the ark, they spoke on Silas, they spoke unto the Bereans. And then they searched the Torah to see if those things were so. This is some kind of, of generated concept and ideology of men that he has taken and sent that to me. And when I saw from him and his wife, I said, no, I won't read that because I see she has a little power there. She has a little swaying power. So when he finds himself in the ditch, he doesn't know which way to go and what to say. Then she has a little sway power. That no, man, you're not going to bring me under that kind of spirit, man. You better put it in his name. Just write your name in bold letters. I had my achros yesterday. I get this package in a box of all these nice, expensive, beautiful T-shirts. I don't know if we have time to print them up. But I received that from him, uh, and he could have had him and his family as a wife, he has children. They listened to me uh, right in West Virginia. And yet he sent me a box for the mission, for the works. Isn't that amazing? And there are people that say they love Yahweh, will not. They don't give a damn. I had a man call me the other day. Uh, he had heard an old message. He says to me, uh, can you give me the address of that preacher that you were talking about that I can send him an offering? I said, what preacher? Maybe it's an old message, my friend. And I said this to him, the service. I said, send the offering here. And the poor shall have this truth preached unto them. Send it to me. And he begins to chuckle. Yet people think that they're right. You understand? He, he knew nothing of this pastor. This is self-righteous way. You understand? That's the way man is. And thinking because we will help the poor. No, the poor. You're not going to eradicate the poor with a $50 offering, man. But you can change his whole outlook and his concept when you hear the power of the imat of Yah preach unto him in a way of deliverance. And the poor, the only needs to hear the word of Yah preach to them. They may be poor and not trust, but they're rich in their ruach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so for this cause, Yah gave them up to a vile affection. 
Don't we see that today? Atlanta is a town of what these foolish Negroes and their faggot dogs, they think that they're the Hebrew Israelites. They're damn liars. It's a town full of faggots, are they not? Town full of bull daggers. I was listening to one speak on that matter because it is so rampant today. It was a teacher that she had students and all of them, they were girls with girls, kissing and all of that. And so some years passed, she saw the girl, she was a mother, she had children, and she was married. So she says to the young girl, I, I thought that you were a gay. She said, oh, that was just a fad, something we were going through, all of us. So don't tell me this is something that uh, these damn dogs, y'all give them over to that spirit. You understand? Because our forefathers have blasphemed, and you see that rampant in Atlanta. You don't know, you, you better be careful. Nothing but a house of faggots. Damn dirty beasts, sodomites, filthy, stinking dogs. And you tell me those are Hebrews? They're not the Ibri of Yah. And that's a fact, Yisra'ya. There was a mixed multitude that came out of Misraim when Yah brought his people out. And when they went a murmuring and complaining, it caused hell, it caused Yisra'ya to be gone to lust for those things that they should not have lusted for. And you tell me these beasts of hell calling upon a name that is not synonymous with the creator and they are progenerators uh, and they strengthen the blasphemy against the Most High of Yisrael. When the man blaspheme against the name of Yah, they put him in a ward until the mind of Yah will show them what to do. I speak the mind of Yah to show us what we must do. There's a spirit, this blasphemy. We know that there is no forgiveness for it. And I know how the religious whore has taught us that. You're going to hear it from Yah's mind, what he says concerning that. I want to begin here in the book of Tehillim. Psalm 74 and verse 1. Is that we speaks of the condition of the people of Yisrael. And he cries out unto you in great agony because the desolation of the tabernacle was at hand. He's going to destroy this nation and all nations. He's going to bring them to ruins. And Daiwi began to cry with assessment of Yisrael. With an earnest love that Yah may hear his cry and answer. To Helium 74 verse 1 he says, O Yah, why have you cast Yisra'ya off forever? And those that are under this great agony of oppression in this nation and around the world. It seems as though that Yah has cast us off forever. Why have you cast us off Ulam. He asked Yah, why does your anger, your offer, does Yah, does he get mad? He said, why does your, uh, your king resentment, your anger, it seem as though that uh, the smoke against the sheep of your pastor. Did he say the wicked or the sheep of his pastor? He said the sheep of his pastor, his anger. He is angry with the wicked. We that are Yisrael, we are wicked when we criminally uh, defy the Torah of Yah. When you make excuses, when you make provisions for your flesh uh, not to obey the command of Yah by the created imagination of your own intellect. Why is your, uh, your resentment against the sheep of your pastor? Well, Yah, this is his form of disciplining us, Yisrael. He disciplined us. He disciplined us. We don't want Yah to correct us in the midst of his, his harun, his anger that cannot be impeded. 
When a father sees a child does something that it, it upsets him, he gets angry, he spanks him, he doesn't brutalize her. Remember Zachar, your Eda, your congregation, which you have purchased of old. He did. By the blood of the lamb and the bullocks, which you have purchased of old. He said, the rod of your inheritance, which you have redeemed. This is Mount Zion, wherein you have dwelt. You have dwelt in the bosom of Yisrael. In Yerushalayim, where your name is, it's in our heart. That's why they went to Yerushalayim, because that was where the name of Yah is. And he has put his name in the bosom of Yisrael. We're in Yerushalayim, the city of Shalom. Because we have the shalom of Omar Iyan. He said, lift up your feet to the perpetual desolation, the ruins, the mashu'ah. Even all the enemy, remember that the enemy has done wickedly in your Chodesh place. These are the enemies of Yah. They have done wickedly in the place, even in the land of Yerushalayim, even in the place that say they have set aside for his name, they have done wickedly. He's talking about the enemy, isn't he? Your enemies roar in the midst of your congregation. They set up their incense and they also set it up for a sign. What is the most profound incense or the sign that we have noticed through our years, our growth, our maturity, our maturation. It has been one of the most damnable pagan images upon the face of the earth. This damn lie that's created by this mind that is convoluted and twisted as hell. A mind that blasphemed the name of God to create the spirit of blasphemy uh, that, that opposes Yah in everything that it does, Yisrael. This has been the sign in the Negro church churches, uh, in the white churches, uh, in the Asian churches, uh, strange as hell, isn't it? Yet we as the people of Yah, Yisrael, we are His people. Yeah. Yet we must call upon Him in a language that is of the bastard. Uh, no, we cannot, Yisrael. He's talking about His enemies, what His enemies have done. His enemies. A man was famous according uh, as he had lifted up an axe to the thick tree. You thought you had brought Yah down, so those individuals, they have become famous. Uh, the T.D. Jakes, the Benny Hens, they have laid the axe to the tree, the tree of fruit, of peri, of righteousness. They have brought down his name to make it Shah. They have brought down the Shabbat. They have laid the axe to the tree, the tree of life, Yahshua. He is the eighth. Of life. They laid the axe to that tree. They brought his name down for damn Jesus. They brought down the, the mitzvah of Yah for their Baptist ways, their Methodists, uh, their Pentecostal, their black ways, and the white ways. And they become famous men like TD Jakes. Thousands and millions of dollars come in. Billy Head, billions. Uh, faggot like Paul Crouch, uh, a damn faggot dog. These men, in 15 years, he has brought, Paul Crouch has been there 35 years. He has brought in billions of dollars that people have given to that tomb they've given because they're gullible and they're foolish. So they've laid the axe to the tree. Yeshua is the tree of life. And men have become famous for laying the axe to Yeshua Hamashiach to cut him down to bring him down, to bring his name down, to naught, to shove. He said, they have cast fire into your mikdash place. They, they have halal, they have defiled, they have profaned. The body is the mikdash, the place of your dwelling. They have cast fire out of their mouths. The fiery tongues of oration, the attitude against Oh Maria. While they have done that, they have defiled you by casting down. 
I want you to hear this. They have defiled Yah. You, he said, they have, you have cast down the dwelling place. You have cast down, again, let me begin. They have cast far into your mikdash place. They have defiled you. Does it say that? Does it say they have defiled Yah? Into helium 74-7, does it say that? Does it say they have defiled you? Psalms 74 7. Does it say they have defiled you? They have defiled Yah. They have defiled Yah. Ha. Have they defiled Yah? By casting down the dwelling place of your name to the ground. That's how they defiled him. These are enemies now. They've defiled him by casting down the place where his name dwells. He put his name in the bosom of Yisrael. They have cast out fire in the place of Yah to bring down his name, to destroy. They have defiled Yah by casting down his name to the ground. These damn beasts will cast his name down. They will curse his name. They will get upset with you at his name. They will defy you. They will get angry with you when you use the name of Yah. You understand, Yisrael? They said in the Levim, let us destroy them together. Let us destroy the place, his body, Yahshua HaMashiach. We dwell in the body of Yahshua. The Migdash place, the tabernacle, it is the, it is the pattern of the body of Yahshua. They say, let us cast down them both together. Let us destroy the name of Yahshua. And you raise up an image, an imagination. Let us destroy them together. They have burned up all the congregations of Yah in the land. What is the congregation of Yah, the gathering his Eda of his people, whereby his name is honored and lifted up, whereby Yoshua Hamashiach is the sign and the seal of the true name of Yah dwelling among Yisrael. We see not our sign, our oath. We don't see the distinguished mark. There is no more any nobi. Do you see why I cry, Yasin the prophet? I'm not a prophet. Yasin the prophet. I'm not talking about these Lafos, Piriani, Nicodim, weak boys. Don't even know how to take a bath. 25, 35. They still stink. Don't even know how to brush their teeth right. Don't even buy a bottle of Listerine. I'm not talking about a boy like that. I'm talking about a man that has the strength, the character of Yah. Not about these little feminine boys. He said, neither, neither, neither is there among us any that yada how long. How long shall it be? There was a song in my days, how long? How long until we be going home? How long, how long, how long? Hell, nobody knows that. Nobody knows. Just says that not even a prophet or no be. We're sick. We're sad. Why? We've cast down his name. We've brought his name down to the dung hills of hell. We have erected this damnable Baal, the Christ, the Christ. To these that say they're Hebrews, how in the hell can they be Hebrews? At least the Chinese will hold fast to his culture, his heritage. How can it be when they have a bastardized name that is made up? They're not Hebrews. They're false ones. They're false brethren, as Shaul says. Hallelujah. As the old preacher would say, hear me. No one knows how long he cries out, Oh, yeah, how long, how long shall your Zah, your adversary, your enemies, those that oppress, how long it shall be as they reproach? Hear this. Shall the enemy blaspheme your name? Continuously, 
shall the enemy blaspheme? The one that blasphemed the name of Yah. They sought the mind of Yah. David seeks Yah's mind. Shall your Zah, your adversaries, your enemies, not defy, defile, speak evil of, use a name that is not appropriate, synonymous with you, your characteristic, your character, your power, your kingdom? How long will your enemies, are we enemies of Yah? If we blaspheme his name, he said, how long will your, oh yeah, your enemies blaspheme your name continuously without ceasing? without stopping and everything you hear today men standing up on the televisions and all the media they cut down the tree of life they cut it they root him up and they replace him with a damn pagan lie with a damn lying jesus i said yesterday with the damn lies of the christo the christ the jesus with their bell their lords their lord gods how long shall that be, Almighty Yah, that they shall, your enemies, your Oyeb, blaspheme your name forever? Why withdraw your hand, even your right hand? Why withdraw your shoe? He said, pluck it out of your hick, out of your bosom. Take it out, Yah. Because we know that you are sure the word that is your sword. He's going to pull out his right hand, you are sure, out of his hick, his bosom. He's a man, he has a hick, his bosom, out of his place of protection. And his sword, the word, shall go forth and breathe the families of many. Why? Because we have blasphemed the name of Yah. This nation has blasphemed. We are blasphemers because of our deceitful, wicked imaginations. We have imagined our own gods and our own Christ and our own lords and our own Be'el. We have done that, Israel. We must call upon him out of a pure heart. He shall turn to the people of a pure language. His name is pure. It's not a, some kind of a damn hybrid degenerate name. And so the enemy has established these imaginations from his own wicked bosom that the enemies of Yah, you will know them, they will blaspheme his name. They will speak evil against his name. They will denounce it. They will deny it and say, well, the name of Jesus is equal. That's a damn lie. The name of Jesus is a damn imagination. It's a lie. It's a made up. It's a hybrid. It has no enduring power. You can take heirloom seeds and every year you can grow from those seeds. A hybrid have a short lifespan. You grow hybrid seeds, uh, the next year you're going to get, uh, you can take the seeds of hybrid seeds or plants. Uh, that first year you may get a nice cropping. You take the seeds, you let it go to seeds, you may get and the next year 60% or 40%. And the next year you're going to only get 10% and the next year you get nothing. But the heirloom, that which is genuine, his name has always been uh, from the beginning. You can, you can plant the same. The matter of fact, they become uh, better producers because uh, they began to develop the DNA of the soil that you're growing it in. Uh, and they began to produce even more abundantly, more rich and more beautiful, more luscious, more plenteous uh, and more tasty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, taste and see how tall, uh, how sweet almighty uh, he is. Uh, you must taste what the Torah says, Yisra'ah. Yeah. You can't taste it outside of, of some imaginary, vain concept of, of a damn lie to cause you to blaspheme him. Yeah. And that's what these wicked bastard slips are doing. I say it. The Mamzir. You know, said the bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, in the place far away. He shall not even come into the city of Yerushalayim, even until the 10th generation. The bastards are not going in. I gave you all the analogy in the beginning that as a 13-year-old lad, all I wanted to know was my father's name. And when my mother said, my Ema told me, R.J. Nichols, it was something in me, even though I was a young, silly boy. 
that gave identity to that name. I believed it. I knew it was the truth. I knew it was the truth. I knew that this was my father. And although I did not see the man, didn't even see him until I was 53 years old, I knew that that name and that person she identified because only she would know. And when I see the man, he knew without one shadow of a doubt that he is. That's my boy. He is my son. So he says to me, I have nothing to give you. I said, I didn't come for one thing, old man. I'm satisfied. All I need is in the book of life. You understand? The name was enough for me. And because of my email, that's the only reason she gave him something to give to me. That's how that evolved. Hallelujah. So if there were tears in the natural when I saw that man's picture, oh, I want to see ya look upon his pony. We can do that every day. There to sing forever of your shoes. Great and mighty power all the streets of his great beauty. Yah lets me lift my voice. He causes my yalach, my walk, to be in his derech, his way, the way of the Torah. The enemy and this enemy of Yah blasphemes and speak against the name of Yah. That's why the enemy has sought out Yisra'ah. He is not seeking out the world. He's seeking out the remnant, the zira of the seed. He is spreading forth his message of blasphemy because he knew that there is no forgiveness for that sin. When one denounces the power, when one speaks vile against his name, his character, against his Hamashiach, well, it says if we blaspheme the Ruach HaChodash, well, he is the Ruach HaChodash. You understand? He is a Ruach Yisrael. And we shall examine that as we proceed on in this message. All right? Hallelujah. I'm going to close here soon, but I want to cover some more ground for your sake. All right? Hallelujah. He says, you are pluck your hand out of your bosom to revenge this atrocity upon your precious name. But then he petitioned Yah for deliverance for the people of Yisrael Yah in the 18th verse of the same chapter. I want to continue. I want to skip a few verses for time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says unto Yah in verse 18 as he petitions Yah, he says, Yah, I want you to zakhar this, that the enemy, your Oyeiba, they have reproached a haraf. When one reproaches, it is one that blasphemes. He said, your enemy, they have haraf. They have railed against your name. They have upbraided your name. That is what reproach is. That is what haraf is. Uh, he said, your enemies, that your enemy, uh, that your enemy has reproach, uh, has haraf. Uh, oh, yeah. And the nabal and that the foolish uh, or those that are nabal, they're senseless, ignorant people. Uh, he says, and that the foolish people, that the foolish people, that the senseless Nabal, the foolish people, they have done what? Talk to me, Yisraeli. They have what? They have blasphemed. They have no acts. They have blasphemed. They have despised. They have abhorred. Blasphemed what? Your name. 
They have na'ats. They have despised your name. They have rejected your name. The foolish na, the nabal, are the senseless, wicked, ignorant people. These are not my words. This is the mind of Yah speaking to Yisrael. That we said that the foolish people, that the nabal, the senseless people, they have na'ats, they have despised, they have hated, they have rejected your name. He says, I want you to nothan, O deliverer, not the nefesh of your turtle dove to the multitude of the wicked. Yah, don't deliver that which is close to your bosom unto the hands of the wicked. Don't give Yisra'ya over to the hands of the wicked. He said, forget not the congregation of your only, of your poor forever. Have respect. To the covenant, the Brit, for the dark places, for the dark places, the Mechsha, the places of secrecy, the Mechsha, the dark places of the earth, they are Male, Male. Did he say that, that the dark places of the earth are full? Are the secret places of the earth full? He says that the dark places of the earth are full of the habitation of cruelty, Hamas, Hamas, violence against his name, against your people. The earth is full of cruelty. And we think that we're nice, but we're full. The, our earth and tabernacle is full of cruelty. We're cruel with each other. We don't give a damn. We don't consider each other. We just don't give a damn. In your secret little place, your little secret Pandora's box you hide, and you only share that with yours, you're cruel to them because you don't give a damn about them. You will reveal unto them the secrets of your wicked heart, confessing your damn wickedness. Oh, let not the dach, the oppressed, those that are crushed and afflicted, let not the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and the needy, chala. Let the poor, we need him, don't we? Are we poor and needy? Bless all the poor in the ruach. Are we barach of Yah? We poor in the ruach. We are the ones that are going to see Yah. We are the ones that are going to enter into his presence. He says, uh, let the poor and the needy, halak your name. We're in need of your help. We're in need of your strength. Yah, we must halal, we must praise the name of Yah. That is why the enemies of Yah has created this image to cause us to blaspheme uh, the name of Yah. That's why it's difficult for us to eradicate even the sound of that damn paganism out of our bosom. Uh, and when one like me speak, we, we began to cringe because we think uh, I'm doing something wrong. I'm not wrong. Yeah. Damn, they blasphemes the name of the Most High. Yeah. You can't be a Hebrew user. The damn name Jesus and Lord... Uh, the Chinese don't use it. The Japanese do not use it. When we speak in the English language now, we're still Hebrews. We're still the Ibri, Ibrahim of Yah. He said, I want you to kum arise. He says, kum, I want you to rise in the hostel. He says, arise, O Yah. He said, you must plead your own cause. Remember how the foolish man kept how that he blasphemed, he slandered, he dishonored you daily. He said, forget not the voice of your enemies, the tumults of those that rise up against you. Does it decrease or increase? Increases continuously. There is a combative nature against the name of Almighty God. This generation despises it. They reject it because there are things that must be put in play, that the order must be established because we will, we will see. I will not get into the depths on this Shabbat, but next Shabbat, I will show you what shall transpire. That's why the enemy is causing many to trans, 
grants and to blaspheme his name. That's why uh, the enemy is doing what it's doing in the public school system in this nation, all over the world. Uh, men marrying men and women marrying women. And you have to have an act of Congress of law to say that uh, what a marriage is. No, the Torah tells me what a marriage is. Damn what these wicked men say. These are freaks and liars and unfaithful dogs. They're not even faithful to their constituents, constituency. So how do they know truth? They don't know truth. They're deceivers and liars, deceivers and liars, the children of hell. They're not the children of Yah. The children of the God of this world. That's why he deceived their love. Shaul said, if this message of your is hid from you, it is hidden, or this message of the deliverance of the salvation of Yah be hid from you. It is hidden because the God of this world has blinded your eyes. Least the power of the revelation of Torah shine through. You understand the revelation of Yah, His name, the power of His name, and that you must, and that you be your shock. It is our shatan that has blinded their minds. He's given them over into the hands of Hashatan. And they bid his cause and say that you're a Hebrew, you're born of the Ruach, you are the seed of Abraham, and you take a damn pagan English name, a bastardized name, and say this is the name of the son of Yah. You're a damn lawyer. There's grave implications, Yisraeliah. And so it's becoming so common, we don't think uh, that it means nothing. So when someone says it, oh, that doesn't mean anything. I understand what they're saying. I don't understand what they're saying. They're calling Yah Allah. That's what they're saying. They're blaspheming his name. And then you, you can't give credence unto that. You can't say, oh, praise him too. Yeah, that's right. You can't be ashamed and be intimidated. I'm not intimidated. Hallelujah. It's one of the things that when people call me you guys, I say, we're not guys. I don't care how I say that, they still get offended. I say, ma'am, sir, listen, hold, hold up. No, no, no. I don't even let them get by. We're not guys. We're not a bunch of simpletons and fools down here. We're not guys. We're no part of the extension of guy faults, all right? You don't make mockery of us. And they get upset. It's the wicked that don't even get upset with me. But those that think that they're right, they get, oh, I, I'm sorry, you got, no, we're not guys. Hell of a man, I'm not a woman. She's a woman, my son's a woman. We're not guys. Just call me people, you people. But don't call us guys down here. We're not guys. You all hear that? We're not guys. I hear people, you guys, they, the only thing they say, you bunch of dumb jackasses, you fools. See how the subtlety of language, how, how Satan cover his buttocks? Trying to cover it in this damn pagan white lie? That's what it is. Hallelujah. Don't get upset with me. Get upset with them damn wicked men that operate in the spirit of Hashatan. They are damn devils. You get mad at me? Isn't that amazing? And we won't even get mad at them damn dogs that uh, deceive your mind and my mind as well. Don't come to me with that bull. That's what it is, bull. Hallelujah. Can I go a little further? I want to read from the book of wisdom. Shalom of wisdom. As he speaks to Yisraya. Wisdom. First wisdom. Uh, in chapter 1. The Chukmah 1 and 1. Then I want to close from a verse from Yeshaya. But I want to read this from the book of wisdom. Shalom of wisdom to Yisraya. First wisdom. Chapter 1 verse 1. He says, in all of his experience, he gives us profound instructions. He says, love, Sadiq, you that be judges of the earth, the Olam, you that judge every matter, the situation, love righteousness, that you may operate in that spirit. He say, think of Yah with an honest heart, with a pure, sincere heart, not a false heart. This damn image of Yah, of Yahshua, is not out of an honest heart. It is a damn lie. The name is not out of an honest heart. He said out of an honest heart. And in sincerity of heart, you seek him with a devotion, with a great uh, desire, with, uh, uh, with meditation in the Torah. You seek after him because if you seek him, you will find him, Yisraya. You're not going to find him reading no damn fairy tales and love books and all that damn folly. For he will be found of them that tempt him not. Don't pretend that you're something you're not. Don't pretend you love Yah and you know you don't give a damn about him. He will be found of those that do not try him, do not test him. 
And he will show himself to such as, and he, and that do not tempt him. Again, for he will not be found, for he will be found of them that tempt him, that tempt him not. And shows himself to such as do not distrust him. He will make known his power. He will make known Yahshua unto us, the power of his word. If we don't distrust him, but if we distrust him, he's not going to make known the beauty of his Torah to you, Yisrael. This is Shalomo speaking here. He said, for with the tapucha of the forward, one that loved to run the damn fraudulent, perverse, fraud mouth, and the perverse or the yaratz, those that are rash. Well, I, I know him. You don't have to tell me. That's what a perverted individual is. For forward and perverse thoughts separate you from Yah. For our wicked thoughts, they separate us. That's why the enemy keeps us in our imagination. We're always imagining things, don't we? And it separates us from Yah. And his power, and when it is tried, it reproves and convicts the unwise. Hear this, verse 4. For into a malicious nefesh heart, mind, wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is enslaved to sin. These liars have hewn down the eights, the tree of life. They tell you, you don't have to keep the Shabbat. You don't have to call him by his name. They have broken the mitzvah. They have taken the axe to the tree. Yahshua came to fulfill the power of Torah. And they esteem men now, and men feed on, the, feed on the lies and the doctrine, and they carry forth the same principle to teach lies and corruption that men will blaspheme the name of Yah. For the Chodash and discipline Ru'ah will flee from the Mirmah or from the deceit, from the treachery of lies and falsehood and depart from foolish thoughts. That's what that mind will do. For discipline Ru'ah, Chodash, it will depart from foolish thoughts that are without understanding. And will not abide in the unrighteousness when it comes. For wisdom, for wisdom, the chukmah is a loving ru'ah. You all have wisdom? You know it's a loving ru'ah. Hear me now. For wisdom, for wisdom is a loving ru'ah. You all believe that? Oh, I believe that wisdom is a loving ru'ah. We're afraid to speak because uh, we're going to get caught here anyway. We all are. For wisdom is a loving ru'ah and will not, and will not, and will not, and will not acquit a blasphemer from the guilt of his words. Is your all wisdom? Is your all wisdom? Is Yah all wisdom? He is not going to acquit the blasphemers from their words. That's why he warns us and speaks his mind to us. Will not acquit from his words. For Yah is witness of his innermost feelings and a true observer of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. Yah knows what's in that damn heart. He knows that I don't care what I do, this dirty bastard slip is not going to appreciate me. He will not at all acquit the blasphemer. That's why Yahshua warns us that there is a sin. We blaspheme Yah. I will show us the nature of a blasphemer. That's why they're violent against the name of Yah. He will not acquit the blasphemer. That's why that thing had to be eradicated out of Yisrael. Put him in the ward. And kill him what the mind of Yah says. And we must do the same. I want to close here out of the book of Yeshaya. And I'll pick it up again. Hallelujah. Here on next Shabbat, although our Ach will be smaller in gathering on next week, because our Ach will be there in Jamaica, there with our Ach Travis and 
to find our sister, uh, Ahot Hawkins, and Ak Travis, they have an assembly there. And Ak Shimru will be ready. If they ask you to speak, you speak. Hallelujah. And preach. Just do it Yah's way. Who knows what Yah may grant in that house. Hallelujah. He will be ready. Hallelujah. Isaiah Yeshaya chapter 52. As he speaks, you're understanding the state of Yisrael. You must understand that they were under the oppressive rule of Bavar and the Assyrians. As we, Yisrael, are under the oppression of Bavar, as it oppressed us, exacts from us. He speaks unto us, a nation of the people of Yah, to hear as Yah commands him to utter from his mind. Yeshaya 52, verse 5. Now therefore, what have I here? Say, Almighty Yah, Yahweh. Yah says that my people, they are taken away for nothing. They give you a job to serve them. They give you a house to make you a slave. They give you a car to cause you to be captivated and brought under their command, expense, and everything. He said, my people, they're taken away. I can see if there was gold and silver, but they're taken away for nothing, for naught. They, 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 that rule over them, they make them to yala, they make them to cry, to howl like a beast. That is what yala is, to howl like a beast. Saying, yeah, says yah. That's what yah says, the oppressors make us to howl like beasts. We holler to get up in the morning, we holler to get off from work, and our lives consist of two things, getting up, going to work, coming home, getting ready for work. That's the truth. He wanted his people to come out that we as a nation would be rich. The Esha, we're happy. The feast day is celebrated. We gather, we dine, we eat, we grow, we fellowship. And these damn fools are servants to hell today. Those that lay their hands to the plow and turn their back, they're not fit. They're not going to the kingdom. I don't give a damn what you say. You don't know truth. He says, says Yah, and Yah says this, and my name, and my name continuously every day is blasphemed. Now that's a problem. He said, under this system of Bevel, under the oppressive mentality of the Assyrians, he said, my people, they take their strength for nothing. For a few shekels, a few pennies. They pay you 300 a week. They take it back in 200 rent. They take it back in $50 food. They take it back in $20 gas and you're broke as hell. He said, my people are taken away for nothing. And even in the bar, Bemith bar, they labored. They had food every day. No sickness. No diseases. The shoe, they looked down and said, Ma, I don't need to change shoe. These, what? They don't get dusty. They did not wax old. They look and say, <laughs> come on. The clothing did not stink. He bathed them under the living water, Yeshua. Hallelujah. You get a bath in that fuller. You don't have to worry about stinking or getting dirty again when you show enough to get a bath. And Yah says, and my name continuously every day is Naatz. Everything blaspheme his name. Everything, everything. Take that wicked one out of the camp. Put him in prison that we may Know what the mind of Yah speaks on this matter. And the mind of Yah speaks. He said, my name is constantly. And that's what this wicked religious Jezonite spirit has done. To cause the people to blaspheme his name 
daily. That's all you hear the Jesus thumpers uh, and the liars that say they're Hebrews. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Damn their Jesus. For the name of Yah, Almighty Yahweh is great. And his Hamashiach, Yahshua, is a name whereby the Yahshach of Yah is delivered unto Yisrael. Yah. No other name given whereby we must be delivered from the yokes, the power, the bondage of sin. But by the power of Almighty Yahweh in Yahshua Hamashiach. Let us not bless famous name. Hallelujah. Let us eradicate certain words of our vocabulary. We can destroy it, Yisrael. We have the power to do it in Yahshua's name. Yabarak. May he strengthen you, Yisraya. May he cause his blessings, the riches of his knowledge. Is he met to shine upon you, you that have joined us. We greet you all. And you are sure it's mighty name. We do hope that you enrich you today and you were blessed. Hallelujah. And that he poured out the shower of his blessing upon you. You all do assist and help in the works here, sin and offering. I leave it at that. Hallelujah. May Yabrak, you Yisraya, may strengthen you all. Let me hear from you that have joined us. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. I am tired. We turn toward Yerushalayim and all things we do. Barak you are above for you. Riches and your blessings of Yeshua HaMashiach. And touch Yisraya, your people, grant unto us. Shalom. Guide us this day. Protect us. As we travel down the highways, watch over us. As Achim Shimri, his Isha, and our Ima, and Achot, Jennifer, and Achot's blood, and her family, and also Achot, Arita, and all those that have joined us. Barak, I pray, our friends, we told you for our enemies. Yeah, we barak you, for they are the blasphemers of your name. We ask it all in Yeshua's name. Give us rest and strength today as we barak you for the Shabbaton. In the great name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our precious Redeemer, we rock you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.